When you imagine a typical desert landscape with its relentless undulating sands and hidden oases, you often picture the Sahara Desert. The Sahara Desert stands as the largest hot desert globally and the third largest desert overall, following the frigid deserts of Antarctica and the Arctic. It spans 3.6 million square miles, an expanse roughly equivalent to the United States, extending across nearly a third of the African continent. The Sahara is the largest source of airborne dust in the world, and the journey of this dust does not end in the Canary Islands, which are located off the west coast of Africa. The Sahara held significant economic importance in ancient Africa. Commodities such as gold, salt, slaves, fabric, and ivory traversed the desert using extensive caravans of camels. Camels are important for transportation in the desert because they're pretty much physically engineered for it. Camels have physical adaptations that allow them to go extended periods of time without any external source of water, some as long as 10 days. Moreover, their red blood cells possess a unique shape that facilitates blood circulation during dehydration, making them better at withstanding large variations in temperature. The physiology of camels has two main adaptations compared to other mammals, which explains this ability. The camel is one of the most iconic animals of the Sahara. Camels have the ability to close their nostrils to prevent sand infiltration. They also have two rows of long lashes and a third eyelid. When a camel is unable to access food for a long period of time, its body is able to metabolize the fat in the humps for nutrition. The humps can deflate and droop if the camel has gone a particularly long time without food. Professor Sarah Durant, lead author of the Wildlife Conservation Society, WCS, and Zoological Society of London, ZSL, said, The Sahara serves as an example of a wider historical neglect of deserts and the human communities who depend on them. The scientific community can make an important contribution to conservation and deserts by establishing baseline information on biodiversity and developing new approaches to sustainable management of desert species and ecosystems. Takarkori Rock Shelter has once again proved to be a real treasure for African archaeology and beyond, a fundamental place to reconstruct the complex dynamics between ancient human groups and their environment in a changing climate. The Sahara has not always been a desert. Between 11,000 and 5,000 years ago, after the end of the last ice age, 40% of the current land was underwater, including areas that are now arid deserts. 250,000 years ago, the Nile River had pushed through a low channel through Wadi Tushka, flooding the eastern Sahara, creating a mega lake that was an astonishing 42,000 square miles wide. Proffer and O'Leary mentioned that fossils found during expeditions show that the sea in the past supported huge sea snakes, large catfish, and extinct fish that were much bigger than their modern relatives. They also found fishes that crushed mollusks, tropical creatures without a backbone, long-nosed crocodiles, early mammals, and mangrove forests. This changing environment caused the hunter-gatherers who relied on fish to change their diet and start eating more mammals. About 90% of the animal remains from around 10,200 to 8,000 years ago were fish, but this percentage decreased to 40% for remains from 5,900 to 4,650 years ago. About 8,000 years ago, the Earth's tilt changed. This tilt is the reason why the Northern Hemisphere is farther from the sun in winter and closer in summer. However, during the time when the Sahara Desert was green, the Northern Hemisphere was closest to the sun during summer. This change in climate had far-reaching effects, including causing a mega-drought in Southeast Asia and transforming the Green Sahara into the largest desert on Earth. Scientists are still studying whether this slow change in Earth's orbit has rapid or gradual environmental consequences. The Eye of the Sahara, also known as the Richot structure, is a notable feature in the otherwise barren and harsh desert. It was first photographed by Gemini astronauts in the 1960s, who used it as a landmark. Initially, it was thought to be a result of a meteorite impact, but further research in the 1960s showed no evidence of such an event. NASA describes the structure as resembling a giant fossil in the desert, and it has become a recognizable landmark for space shuttle crews. The structure consists of an inner circular dam about 20 meters wide and located approximately 3 kilometers from the center of the Richot structure. 
There is also an outer circular dam about 50 meters wide, situated 7 to 8 kilometers from the center. Within the Rishat structure, there are 32 carbonite baffles and sills. These are like barriers made of a specific type of rock. The dams in the area are typically around 300 meters long and 1 to 4 meters wide. According to geological science, millions of years ago, volcanic activity deep beneath the Earth's surface caused the land around these regions to rise up. Back then, these places were not deserts like they are today. They were probably much more moderate in temperature and had plenty of flowing water. Layers of sandstone rocks were formed by winds blowing sand and by deposition at the bottoms of lakes and rivers during this temperate time. Over time, the volcanic activity pushed the layers of sandstone and other rocks upwards. When the volcanic activity subsided, erosion caused by wind and water started wearing away the dome-shaped rock layers. If you want to explore the Eye of Sahara, you need to first obtain a visa for Mauritania and find a local sponsor. Sediments from a river in Mauritania were also discovered in unexpected places. Satellite confirmation later confirmed the existence of a lost river. This river is now known as the Tamanrasset River, and researchers are still studying it to learn more. The river is believed to have dried up around 5,000 years ago. According to The Guardian, a team led by French researchers made the discovery and believes that the river used to flow into the sea during wet periods that have occurred in the region over the past 245,000 years. In the past, water might have entered through canals. 5,000 years ago, this river would have supported people, plants, and wildlife in what is now desert land. It would have carried important nutrients far into the sea, benefiting marine organisms. Scientists have also found evidence of a lost ocean called the Tethys Ocean in a place known as Whale Valley. It's one of the best locations for finding whale fossils. The fossils include almost complete skeletons of 40 large whales, as well as dolphins, seals, large fish related to swordfish or marlin, and extinct species like sloths and walrus-faced dolphins. These animals lived between 6 million and 9 million years ago. According to the document, scientists are studying the 15-meter-long skeletons of ancient sea creatures along with the animals they lived with. They found big shark teeth next to the whale bones. In the middle of the Sahara Desert, they discovered one of the oldest boats ever made. It was between 8,500 to 8,000 years old and measured 8 meters. The Sahara Desert used to have grasslands with lots of rain, but the weather suddenly changed, making it one of the driest places on Earth. The introduction of livestock caused more plants to be removed, which made the land reflect more sunlight, albedo. This change in the land's reflectivity affected the weather and reduced the amount of rain the area received during the monsoon season. You probably already know that scientists are finding many interesting things in the Sahara Desert and other deserts around the world. But did you know that the Sahara Desert also produces the purest natural glass on Earth? There is a special area where the desert meets the Egyptian border with Libya, and in 1932, scientists discovered this strange glass phenomenon. They were fascinated because they couldn't figure out how it was formed. They believe the glass is over 29 million years old, but the process that created it is still a mystery. The glass found in the Sahara comes in different colors, like transparent, light yellow, light green, and even green-brown. One interesting theory about its origin is that it's a type of rock called tactile. Tactites are formed when a meteorite crashes into the earth and combines with the soil, along with stardust, under extreme heat. Most tactiles are naturally black, but if a meteorite were to hit the desert sand, it could explain the unique colors of the glass. Some people believe that the Libyan glass, as it is called, has healing properties, possibly because it's made of stardust. Even the ancient Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun considered this glass important, as it was prominently featured in his burial chest ornament. Imagine owning something made of stardust. The Sahara Desert holds some more incredible surprises from the past, including fossils of creatures that lived long ago. One of these discoveries is a fossil of a giant crocodile called Machamosaurus rex. This ancient crocodile was enormous, about as big as a bus. Another astonishing find is the fossil of a whale with four legs. Yes, you heard that right. A whale that could walk. 
Scientists believe this whale lived around 43 million years ago and had unique features in its skull and jaw suggesting it had a powerful bite. Lastly, there is the fossil of a bulldog-faced dinosaur, a fearsome predator from the Cretaceous period. It had a massive sail on its back and short arms with large claws. These discoveries are important for paleontologists because they add to our knowledge of ancient ecosystems and how different species evolved and lived. They also challenge previous theories and help scientists understand the diversity of life in the past. What are your thoughts on the Sahara Desert? Let us know in the comments.